Here we go then. Part four, side four, video four. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Um, the winner of March Album of the Month. And uh, we have been playing every song from it. Um well, playing the album, basically. Uh, so we've got, yes, one side left to go. We have The Colony of Slipper Men, brackets, Arrival, A Visit to the Doctor, Raven, Ravine. <laughs> the Light Dies Down on Broadway, Riding the Scree in the Rapids, It. I have not been... 100% following the lyrics as we've been going along because it's to be fair there's a lot of stuff here have you seen I mean I'm sure you have because you you'll all have these records from the 70s the amount of stuff that's written in here is uh, very very small writing so there's loads of it there's enough to fill I don't know columns and columns and column inches uh uh, there's just so much stuff there. Um, I'll have to spend some time going through that, but not today. That'll be another time. Um, so, yeah, let's go. You couldn't really uh, sort of complain about the amount of music that's been included on here, could you? What's this one called? The Colony of Slipper Men. Okay, so there's several parts to this. This is still a colony of slippermen. Your skins are covered in slimy lumps with lips that slide across each chin. His twisted limbs like rubber stumps. A waved in welcome, say please join in. My grip must be fit. Peter Gabriel just invent death metal growling. <laughs> Been a 
He did. Harsh vocals.
have a feeling this is going to be another little instrumental piece. I think this is called Ravine. so enjoy these little segue pieces, these little short instrumental pieces, apart from the atmosphere that they are giving to the um, music as a whole, they feel absolutely timeless. They are very, actually ahead of the time of the sort of stuff that, because of the, the way it's mixed, the stereo. It's just fantastic. My goodness. <laughs> the ravine, or just ravine. Um, right. The light lies down on Broadway.
just thinking what a great groove this is. Phil Collins is playing. And he added that little snare drum. That's uh, not snare, uh, hi hat. Riding the scree. Moving down the water, John is drifting out of sight. It's only at the turning point that you find out how you fight. In the cold, feel the cold all around. And the rush of crashing water surrounds me with 
vivid sound Striking out to reach you I clung it through to the other side When you're racing in the rapids There's only one way That's to ride Taken down, taken down By the undertow In this week's competition, you could win a power boat. <laughs> Sounds like a 70s TV program. <laughs> I just spoiled the whole flow of the thing for everybody. I'm sorry. Damn it, Jim. Along really, really nice, isn't it?
knock a Noah, but I like it. That's very funny. But I like it. And that's... I think how it finishes. <sighs> well, it was a long, long album. Um, there was a lot of music there to listen to in, uh, in a short period of time. Very, very, very interesting music. And as I, I've said on every single one of these videos, the the sound on here is so good compared to where they were. It's a real, real step forward in my, in my eyes, in my ears. <laughs> um, really, really cool. The... I'm trying to think of the standout. The, I don't know if there is any sort of standout moments on here from a sort of musician point of view, but the, the I hadn't been, I suppose, so tuned into the fact that keyboards and synths, and organs were such an important part of the sound. I mean, obviously they are an integral part of the Genesis sound, but here they are front and center the whole time. Everything is there, and everything else is there to support it. The bass on here. In a lot of a lot of the record was so aggressive, uh, well, I mean, assertive, not aggressive, but really, really, um, almost sort of Chris Squire esque. How that is being played, really sort of uh, uh, slightly overdriven and distorted, Rickenbacker sounding, um, and high in the mix. Um, and Phil Collins's drums were very, very, I mean, not just a very, very good. They were sort of unbelievably good um he's kind of one of these drummers that I've, I've listened to a little bit obviously on genesis and i knew him from when he was a solo artist um in the air tonight that sort of stuff that's although did -dum, did -dum, did -dum, did -dum, it's a sort of like one of those sort of iconic drum moments it's not actually a very difficult drum part it's just a Thing, but on here he's really, really showing his chops. He's really, really, absolutely, blindingly good on here. Um, and uh, Peter Gabriel, what can you say? It's um, <laughs> I couldn't believe how much he sounded like Bon Scott at one point. I, that I was not expecting that. And then he did some death metal vocals. Uh, what? No. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't. I think he was just in character of uh, of a person um, like he does on his on a lot of these tracks. But uh, that surprised me and made me giggle. And then I'm sorry I spoiled it all because I suddenly thought it sounded like a game show soundtrack. Uh, no, and I should, that was like the culmination of the album. Oh my god, Jim! Of all the moments to choose to sort of get out of character and to sort of uh, and to. to go off on one that was not the moment to do it so i'm i think i might have spoiled this for people i'm sorry <laughs> oh dear oh dear oh dear um steve hackett where was he he wasn't I mean, there was bits and pieces on here but he wasn't as, as i say this is not a guitar album there's not a lot of guitar on here oh well, there is but there's not a lot of prominent guitar um it's there as another element of the overall sound but not as a lead instrument in a lot of for most of the time uh, which is quite interesting yes, it was oh there we go album of the month I now need to go and understand what this is about properly rail the young Puerto Rican New Yorker on a journey of self-discovery enlightenment and rebirth meeting various oddities and people along the way. I need to try and sort of uh, understand this all a bit more because I think there's a, there's a lot there to go at and I ain't getting it on the first time. But um, Hi, Future Jim here. Just to say that it's been about a week since I recorded uh, the video for The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Um, and in that time, I've listened to the music, the songs, the album, probably about three times um, due to uh, editing and re-watching on YouTube and sort of just generally sort of working through it. 
And I think it's fair to say that I have a little bit of a better understanding of what it's all about, having uh, listened to it multiple times. I think it's absolutely one of these sort of albums that deserves, needs to be listened to uh, so many times. It was impossible, because there's no way I was going to be able to get this on a first pass. Um, and I think... I still don't get it entirely. I don't understand what happened to Rail at the end. What happened to Rail and John? They sort of merged into one, became the same person. Was it was John, brother John, actually Rail the whole way through? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I understand now what all the different um, parts were, what we're talking about, the different uh, creatures. Um, if you want to call them that, or weird, uh, made up. Was the whole thing an LSD trip? I mean, it's, it's so freaky, a really bad trip that he, uh, Real is just encountering all these really scary, nightmarish scenarios uh, throughout the whole passage of the album. Uh, first of all, being um, well, just of seeing the lamb initially on Broadway was a really weird thing. And then to be swallowed up by the black cloud, find himself in a cave, um, escaping there, um, and um, crawling along the carpet to be in the room with 32 doors, Lilef, Lilef, um, taking him um, off to the waiting room where I mean, the whole thing did he die I don't know um, meeting the slipper men meeting and eating the lamias I mean the whole thing is just absolutely open to interpretation um, um, long story short <laughs> if you can possibly even say that I under I get it that it's um, uh Real, the Potter Rican punk, coming out of the subway, ready to cause mischief with his uh, can of uh, car paint about to spray on the walls, bits and graffiti. And um, he was totally transported um, away to this, for want of a better word, like a, a, sort of a, like a hellish underworld. Um, and the experiences that he had there uh, just set out here. So I think initially I was thinking that the lyrics to the songs were going to be far more um, metaphorical, as in they were describing something but actually just thinking about something else. And I, I think you can take it very much at face value that everything that was being spoken about or sung about was a story. So Peter Gabriel is actually narrating a story. Um, but of course, as I say, it can be taken in many different ways that you interpret the story to mean different things. Is it an LSD trip? Is it him dying? Is he unconscious? I mean, is he actually being transported away to... Um, by aliens or something. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. And I don't think you need to know. You just need to enjoy it. And that's what I'm taking away from it. I think it's something I'm going to listen to a lot of times again and over and over and over again because even after listening to it two or three times, I'm still hearing new things on it every single time. I don't know that uh, in the comments that you guys have been saying the same thing, that you've been listening to it for 50 years and it's still is the most incredible and um, enlightening set of musical pieces that that you know. So that's I just wanted to put this in there, that actually having had some time to reflect and to think about it and to listen to it, it's kind of a bit easier to sort of channel my thoughts now than it was a week ago. So there we go. Back to Jim. There you go. Right. Thank you for sticking with it. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you all on the next video whenever and whatever that is. Until then, this is Jim. Over and out. Out.